Hello guys and welcome to the show. Thank you for tuning in on another Thursday night. Thank you so much for everyone who has signed up to Patreon, Instagram and Facebook during the week and also hitting that thumbs up button on all the videos I've released. So if you could just hit that subscribe button to start off with and hit the thumbs up and the notification bell, everything helps. I'd really, really appreciate it. And it takes a second of your time. You can do it right now before we get into the meat and potatoes of the show. So once again, thank you for everything and helping this channel grow to a oh, more than our expectations. This is unbelievable. So here I'll bring in Jason. Hello, Jason. Looks like you finally got the microphone working. Great news. I have. Well, there's a bit of a story about that. Today, I am another awesome, awesome supporter of firearms and a friend of mine. He installed a part of a kitchen while my walk-in pa uh, kit pantry for me. And he donated these microphones and headphones and an action cam to the show, which I cannot thank him enough. So that's uh, JAL. Uh, joinery. So if you're in Brisbane and or Gold Coast and you need cab, uh, cabinets or anything, go and see him. He really does know his stuff, done an awesome job, and he looks after shooters and fishers uh, people, uh, not, not the political party, of course, but the uh, people who fish and shoot. He will help them out in any way he can. Top guy and great prices. The guy's amazing. His work was was top notch. So, and thank you very much for donating all this stuff to us. I really appreciate it. So, it how's your week been? Good. It does sound pretty good. I like it. it. Does sound pretty good. Not as good as my setup, of course, but you know, you, nah. you got what you've got. <laughs> yeah, I've got yeah. I'm just got to adjust this and I've got the new webcam. There we go. That's bit better. better. Okay. Yeah. So, it's, uh, no, I was happy with that. That's um, yeah, it's amazing. The sound is amazing. I'm not really clued up on computers in that too much i'm more of a practical guy building stuff and blowing then blowing it up but that's uh but that's a, about as far as my extent goes shooting up computers is uh, what have you been up to the week not much man we've had a bit of lag there so just for me but not much oh. man just um doing a few shows um trying to plan an upcoming hunt i was supposed to go away last week but um the weather got ahead of us and it started raining where i was going to go and then a friend pulled out so it was pretty it was pretty crap so uh we're going to do it another four weeks so hopefully by well, i think it's about mid august i'm going to be going down to the rabbit property hopefully long range shooting of rabbits and um trying out the 300 winchester magnum the new bagara yes sorry guys i haven't shot it yet with all the covid shit that's just ramped up no doubt the ranges are going to get hit again probably in new south wales we're seeing what's happening in victoria so you never know. I might not even be able to go on a hunt, say, in four weeks' time. So time will tell. Yeah, they are talking about that. And that's something that you and me have been talking about the last couple of days. Are they going to attack gun shop owners yet again? it would be very interesting to see if they uh, do do another assault on us. But I'll be surprised after the backlash last time. I'd be very surprised, but you just never know. But uh, I do think New South Wales is next to close down again. The so-called second wave, um, yeah, I think it, that's next to come. And then, of course, we'll follow up here in Queensland. Yeah, if that does, man, it's going to be pretty bad for the, the gun shops and that. I don't know if they can handle a second a second bout of troubles, but hopefully, you know, with what a few of the people did down in Victoria on starting some type of legal action and tribunals and, you know, Firearms Appeals Committee, hopefully we can ward off any more closures to gun shops. I mean... You know, yeah, if they, they what they did last time, well, then they probably will. But, you know, if they don't this time, then why do it the first time? Makes no sense. So, yeah, they might see that as they finally, um, th there is an organization that's not fucking around. They're actually going to start doing something to us, not, not just, uh, yeah, sitting on their hands, basically. Mm. And, uh, but I think there could be another video coming up, I feel. Um, the different sorts of organisations. I do think if uh, you're providing a genuine reason, man, I think those guys definitely do bend over and um, are full of bullshit in most things because they want to keep that gravy train coming in no matter what organisation. And you do see organisations that do fight for us and what do they ha have that the other organisations don't? 
They don't have a genuine reason, so they got nothing that the government can take off them. Yeah, exactly. But we've got some good discussions. Cut these uh, live streams are picking up, which is really good to see. Um, you know, we <laughs> when we first did it, we weren't sure whether people were even going to tune in or what was going to happen. Like like two or three people, but. Yeah, they've picked up really well. So we're going to kick ass tonight. We're going to talk about chassis. We're going to talk about stocks. Me and Aaron were to tossing and turning and to and throwing throughout the week, finding out what we're actually going to talk about. So it's good to talk about, you know, chassis and stocks. Like Aaron's probably got more experience with chassis than I do, but I've got one on a, on a 22. But we're going to talk about that. We're going to answer questions. We're going to mate, have a grand old time. So, you know, sit back, grab a beer or something or your choice of beverage of choice, and uh, let's have a good laugh tonight and have a bit of fun. Definitely, definitely. So this was an actual viewer uh, request. I put out a shout out because we've got a few episodes coming up that are going to be really good, but we're just waiting on some stuff to turn up so we can present the episodes to you. And we thought something was going to turn up tonight to be able to show you, but it didn't. So a viewer, I will find his name because uh, I do appreciate... Oh, are you there? All right, yep, still got you. So, yep, dropped out. What I don't know what's going on with this connection, man. No idea this yep. week again. Well, we had, do have a bit of rain and a few storms here, so it could be when it rains here. My old phone lines out in the countryside don't really work. I do apologise if that happens. If it does fully go down, we will start up again and carry on. We'll reload the computers and, and get back into it, so you just have to hang out if something does happen. But, yes, yeah, so, so as I was saying, it was a... Uh, viewer request. Uh, I put a shout out because I do want to try and get you guys more involved because you make the show. I make the videos, but without you guys, I don't even no point making the videos because no one will watch them. So I really do wanted you guys to start putting a little bit of input into it. So this was from Chris Lucas. He wanted to know about chassis versus traditional hunting stocks, but we'll go a bit further and we'll talk about. Uh, the target stuff as well. So, chassis. I, uh, yep. Well, basically, hunting. If you're walking around, that's a big no from me. But <laughs> as for target, of course, I think they do work work really well for target shooting. Uh, that's just my overall opinion. Uh, when you're, if you've got a, okay, long range, or you can sit down and shoot and just wait for something to come across, not walking around. Yep, chassis rifles, not a problem. Not a problem in the world. Uh, you can use all those Wildcat cartridges and that, but if you're carrying something around all day on your shoulder, I do think a normal lightweight stock is the only way to go with nothing sharp and pointy sticking out into you. Yep. No, I totally agree. I've got a chassis for my CZ457. It's the um, LSS Rimfire. Now, I haven't, <laughs> that's, I've had that since pretty much Christmas, and due to all the crap that's gone on, I haven't even had a chance other than the little bit we had, you know, when I was shooting with you in Queensland at Christmas time to be able to do a full test on it. It's my first chassis, so I don't really have anything else that's, that's like that. Um, I'm keen to get out just to try again. I've never really had anything with that type of pistol grip style, you know, situation going on. So I am keen to get it out. Um, had a few issues, you know, in Queensland with um, uh, the certain types of rings that I had. I had to get a rail for it. Um, finally, I've got it pretty much set up to where I want it right now, and it's 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 doing well. So now I just got to get out and actually shoot it. But I want to test out more of the ergonomics of chassis. You know, lying behind them, do they feel as comfortable as say? You know, your standard hunting stock, you know, obviously they're going to be better because you're probably going to have one of a couple of things. You're going to have a good um, a cheek weld or, or riser, cheek riser. You're going to have a good length of pull, whether it's via a spacer or some type of system like that. And you're going to have a good pistol grip, palm swirl, whatever you want to call it. Any of those things, uh, you know, if I'm very keen to get it out. So watch this space. But, um, yeah, I think Aaron's 100% right. If you're going to go out, um, hunting in the bush, uh, you know, just stick with your standard style stocks. If you're going to uh, lie on the ground for long range shooting, um, a stock of similar or a chassis similar as well, I think will do really well. Um, I can see uh, down the bottom there, um, explosive Bagara HMR operator. So 
on that stock. It's actually got a great length of pull via spacer, a good cheek riser, and a good palm swell. So really, really good. And um, shit, man, people are getting into the oh, super yes. taps already, man. Oh, oh yeah. God. Oh, geez. I don't want to end up on the floor again, guys. I don't want to end up on the floor like I did two, you know, last two times. Oh, please, please. Well, thank you very much, Jay Rush. Uh, I will bring it up, but I can't go all the way down. As you know, this program cuts all the questions above it off if I go too far down. So we will get to you, but I will read his question out very first before I get into the Patreon questions. So Jay Rush, $5 uh, super chat. Thank you. Thank you so much. Don't forget uh, we got Paul. Paul did one too. Paul did $1 from uh, – was he our first one from last time? I can't remember a few weeks ago. Yes. Was Paul the one that started it? Paul G. He, he, he kicked the latest fad off. Yeah. He did. And he did it again tonight. Paul, sorry if I don't understand your name, Paul. Paul Giannane, if I got that correct. Um, i only seen one, but I think it could be a bit of delay here. Yeah. Um, okay, so Jay Rush. Evening, gents. I have a Howler APC and 308 and an MDT RX and 223. They, tra- they, well, they are tech drivers and I love them. Mm-hmm. Well, I have reviewed before the channel was taken down, the first channel, the APC, fantastic. That is uh, one of the Australian Southern Cross um, small arms, I think they are. They actually make that for Hauer, and it was a very nice rifle. It, it worked really well, and I've actually got a review coming up. I was just talking to Jason today. Hundred blackout. I'll give you a little heads up for the guys watching it. Uh, great chassis, awesome chassis, made by MDT. Uh, it's one piece, so there's nothing to move on it, so it's really solid, very lightweight. In fact, I reckon it's probably the one of the chassis that you could use for walking around. I think the only one of the very few that I would actually use the yeah. RX stock, and it uh, and it was nice. It was just the caliber that didn't work for me. The 300 blackout, that's all. But nothing mm-hmm. else was wrong with it. It was just the caliber, didn't quite work. So that yeah, we also to- got on here too. Demir, Demir from Southern Cross Small Arms is down oh. a little bit in the in the chat as well. He makes the Southern Cross Small Arms chassis, so he's a nice guy. So I will yeah. get to it. I will get to that that um, when I can get down there. But, I don't think they're going to disappear this time, man. I don't think they're going to disappear. Okay, well, I'll go down, but if it does, you are to blame. Sorry, guys, uh, blame me. If it happens, I'm so sorry. Uh, okay. Demir. Okay, here is, oh, man, super chat, super chat, trying to find them. But yeah. tomorrow, the review coming out is actually Southern Cross Small Arms Chassis Review. So I am using that one. Here is Paul. I just found him. Thank you very much, Paul. I have, uh, and here is Jay Rush. So, yep, uh, very good guns, both of them. They work really well. Uh, I still can't find Demir's. Oh, and we have a... Demir Lucic. Is it Lucic? Lukic? Lucic? I think it's Lucic. So, Ollie Bren, thank you very much. Cheers, boys. Thanks for the show and your channels. You are welcome. And don't forget, guys, Jason has a channel. He makes amazing hunting videos when he goes out. He doesn't put out a lot of content, but the content he does put out is fantastic. It really is. But he's, he does. Oh, there we go. Hey, boys. Demir. Uh, so, <laughs> tomorrow we are putting out. Oh. Here we go. Hardcore unit. Love the show, boys. $5. Thank you. Oh, geez. <laughs> guys, I'm going to end up Gary on the gosh. It's going to happen. Thank you so much. I can – well, Jason's been hounding me for two months now. I don't know if you can hear that. I can go yeah. – I'm paving up to buy a new chair. <laughs> yes. I tell you what, guys, I've been at him for literally weeks now, that – I can hear that every time he moves on that chair, that squeaking. I'm like, dude, I'm going to kill you after if you don't get a new one. Can you know? hear that now? <laughs> yeah. It's not as yeah. bad as it was because you've got a better headset. cutting out a bit. But uh, anyway, let's get into some questions, man. We're talking about Shazzy. Well, well, well. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yes. Well, what I was saying, tomorrow the review is Southern Cross Small Arms Chest Review. Now, I'm using that on the new 6.5 PRC. 
so which will be ready in a few weeks hopefully so i'll be showing that on here and uh yeah so we will get in some questions there you go jace knock it off rod knocker I use a chassis for flexibility. Um, I shoot in both Queensland and New South Wales on property, and I need a system that I can put fixed stock onto when required by law. Yeah, man, that is pretty shit, dude. To be brutally honest, I mean, I know we're in. I'm in New South Wales, so we can't have a lot of these guns, especially anything with a folding stock. Um, I reckon it'd be awesome to get something with a folding stock or similar. Yeah, you know, they they fold down a bit better, better for the gun safe, better for your gun bags. Um, I just I just actually had to buy. Uh, a bunch of gun bags just the other day um, because, you know, when you get the bigger guns, the longer barrels, uh, you, you know, you basically need something that's going to fit them. You know, you buy those ones off eBay or the gun shops. They don't fit the big scopes. You know, they end up pulling apart from the from the zipper. Uh, so I end up buying, I think they're 52 inch by 12 and that does even the Bagara as well and they're specifically cut out as well for the scope. They're really, really awesome. So you can find them out there. They're about 120 bucks. If That'd I can find the company again next week, if I can get onto it as well. But yeah, dude, chuck one up on screen next week. Killing it. Another one. Okay, yeah, no, we... Oh, geez. Okay, I got to get down there and hopefully it won't cut out. Oh, it's Demir. Yeah. Demir, actually. Demir. Thank you so much, Demir. Thank you. You guys yes, rock yeah. and are funny. Yes, we do. Yes, we yes, do. I'm we very are. funny. I'm funnier than Aaron. You guys know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's the, definitely the class clown and complete idiot. <laughs> and you got another so, one, dude, Chris Miller, right at the top. Oh. See if you can look at it right at the top. If you can scroll right to the top, they should be located across the top. Yeah, they are. Got to find that. Let's fill up. Um, Chris Miller can't spend the cash at the range. So here you go, lads. Fourteen ninety nine from Chris Miller. There we go. Cool. Jeez. Thank you so much, Chris. He's a big uh, supporter of the show. Always on here asking very good questions. That is awesome. Thank you so much. I'm one step closer to a new chair. And I <laughs> promise when I get it, I will put up a uh, a yeah. post on and another one. Paul again. Paul's back. Yeah. Never That's warm to the tax stocks. Much prefer a nice walnut. Purchase a CZ. I don't know, guys, if you're still hearing me, I'm sorry. I don't seem to have a good connection at the moment. Um, let us know in the comments, guys, if you're seeing me, uh, you're hearing me. Yeah, so sorry. You guys can hear me. Sorry, Frozen. Um, all right, guys. Well, it looks like I'm going to be running the live stream for just a couple of minutes. Um because obviously Aaron's been booted out, got a bad connection. I actually thought it was my connection, so it looks like I'm going to take control at the moment. So uh, I'm not going to be able to bring the stuff up on screen till he gets back. So, And here's me looking down and <laughs> being silly when I thought I was cut off. All right, let's get into – so thanks, Paul. Uh, yeah, mate, I've got the CZ457 as well, premium. Yeah, mate, I think I bought the CZ457 Varmint. Yeah, so that's pretty good, dude. Uh, in the MDT LSS Rimfire Chassis, uh, I think it's uh, the the 20-inch barrel. Yeah, it's a nice gun, man. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, let us know what your ammo you're shooting out of it because I'm shooting the Federal Hunter Match, some CCI standards as well in different ones as well. So uh, Aaron's just messaged me saying this is not good. <laughs> that's all right he'll join us in just a few moments all right so guys just let me know if you're hearing me and everything's really good there um let me know uh if you can hear me just in the comments and i'll, I'll read them as we're going down but i'm just going to continue so dave hubner another great thursday night coming up love your work gentlemen thanks dave that's uh really appreciative of you thanks for that I'm sure aaron will be very very happy when he actually gets back here again thanks to chris uh, Demir and also Gary 
across the top there as well. So thanks, guys. And all the rest that super chatted, I'm only seeing the last three that are on top. So thank you, guys, for that. All right, what do we got here? Let's have a look. 303-25, he says, never used a chassis or plastic stock before. Are they worth a try? Don't think I could even get them for what I from what I have, though. Ha ha. Old Enfields and Brunos and the like. Um, yeah, Damn. man. I think back. Aaron's back again. So, oh, so didn't, the whole thing didn't cut out. No, no, I'm still, we're still going, dude. Oh, we are still going. Awesome. Mate, I go, um, even that opened one. up the door so I get better internet. <laughs> yeah, click, hey? click on that one 303 25. 303 25. Okay, I'm just going to go to the top. Your internet sucks bad, dude. Uh, that Wi-Fi sucks bad. It does. It's been raining here, so it's always crap. Uh, so where are you up to? 303-25, third question down. Uh, no, it's done it again. I've lost all the questions above us. Really? Yeah, I've lost, yeah, I've lost everything. Yeah, fuck. Okay. It's okay, all right. well... If you I can, can tell from here. Yep, sweet. Yeah, we've got 303 oh, wow. 25. You said never used a chassis or a plastic stock. Uh, are they worth a try? Um, yeah, I mean, give it a go, man. Try a chassis. Nothing wrong with chassis, man. Give them a go. See what you think. Report back to us on the next live stream. But, I mean, I think they're pretty good. Um, I've got one, obviously, and I've got your normal stocks. I like both. I think if you're hunting, stick with your plastic-style stocks if you're going to do some long-range shooting. Yeah, I mean, you can still do stocks as well. It's not going to be that big of a deal. So, um, yeah. Where are you up to, Aaron? Who are you got? Sorry, guys. We've had some technical difficulties. So, uh, Kings of Kenworth uh, at 7.02 p.m. Oh, no. You've lost heaps of food. You want me to go on from here? Um, yeah, I am going on YouTube okay, now just to double check. Yeah. Dude, your connection is coming okay. through super bad, dude. It's super pixelated. It's horrible. Uh, okay, how about now? How's that? Oh, it's okay. Anyway, let me, get what I'll do, Aaron, maybe would you stay where you are on the screen for comments and then I'll just go down because the people have got a lot of questions there from 5.52. And then yep. once we get down to where you, you are, we'll again. Yeah, definitely. All right. So just take Paul's off the screen if you can. Just just remove that one just so we can get we can talk. Uh, right. No, I cannot be doing that. No, you can't uh, even see it. Uh, oh, yeah. Kings of Kenilworth. Okay. I got it. Yeah. All right, so let's get back into go. it. Guys. Sorry about that. It might happen. We, you know, yep. we've got, Aaron's got to get a wide connection sometime over the next couple of weeks. So, all right, Paul S. Yes. He's my two four three in an MDT Oryx chassis. He's a little heavy for carrying all day, but it's ergonomic. I love the pistol grip and purchase a five eighty five. Absolutely, mate. Um, Paul S. My three R weight in an AT. Oh, sorry, at one Boyd stock, which is I love. I'm a short ass that needs something that can adjust a thirteen inch length of pull. Um. Here we go. K. Lucas. So he says 6 p.m. Uh, this was about a question I asked on Facebook page about chassis versus traditional stock for hunting, but for hunting accuracy versus weight. As Aaron said, I think um, if you're going to go weights huge in the field, I wouldn't be going out with a, a chassis in the field unless, you know, you, you're sitting up on top of a hill and you're going to shoot long range or something like that. Um, then yeah, that absolutely. I think they'd be they'd be great for that. If you're going to go hunting and you're walking five ten kilometers a day, just stick to your standard, you know, plastic synthetic stocks, lightweight hunting rifles, because I think they're going to do the best thing for you. What do you reckon, Aaron? Yes, definitely. I'd um, yeah, I'm like you. I agree. Just uh, lightweight synthetic stock if you're walking around all day. That's for sure. Uh, all right. That's one thing I'd definitely definitely stick to. Yeah, six fifteen. Um, Hang on, your your connection is really bad, dude. It's super bad. You the lag here is just terrible. You we're going over the top of each other. Okay, what I'll do is I will disappear for a second and I'll jump on the laptop. All right, guys, I'll be perfect over for a bit. Yeah, I'll be taking over for a bit. Yep. Um, all right, Decker Hex. How do you get a license to have a chassis? Pistol, e.g. Aaron's Ruger Charger, and what comps can you use them in? Also, are the other states that let you use a pistol carbine conversion kits? Mate, good question. 
That's better for Aaron. Once he cracks up the laptop, I think it'd be better. Um, I will go back to that question, buddy. All right. Let's go down a little bit further. Grant Schubert for rabbit hunting and planking with 22 long rifles stock all the way. Yep. I would agree with that dude in, in, in a way. Yep. I've got two 22s. So the first one is the CZ457 Varmint in that MDT LSS chassis. And I've also got the Ticker T1X. Uh, that's just in the standard stock. And I've just got a cheap, um, I think it's a Hawk 3 to 9 by 50 on it, just with the mill dot reticle. And I've been using the Strelock app to, you know, hold over. Uh, with those mill dots and it's actually working really well guys and like i keep saying to people you don't have to spend you know a huge amount of money to go out there and spend you know money on high-end optics and stuff like that if you've got the money great if you don't that's fine too there's things you can do you know sort of to get away with it a little bit but um yeah man i love my rabbit shooting too if you saw my videos on um ahp outdoors <laughs> i made like a full sort of documentary style uh, videos about them part one rabbit hunting mayhem part one and part two so uh if you haven't seen it check it out on my youtube channel all right who we got now sorry guys i'm just trying to hold the fort until aaron gets back so putrid human <laughs> i think i've seen you on instagram dude so welcome hey shooting family need a bit of advice on caliber of my next rifle it's looking like it'll be 336 Marlin lever action with 16 and a half inch barrel, mainly for pigs and foxes. Do I go 3030 or 4570? Wow, good question, man. My brother used to have a 4570, and those things kicked like a mule, man, especially with the the you know the full loads not you know loaded down. They kick like a bitch too, and it's a pretty expensive to shoot, I would say. So I mean 3030, man, pigs. You know, I guess you're going to be on a quad or you're going to be on a motorbike or back of a four-wheel drive or something like that. So, man, I'd probably go 30-30, but, man, 45-70 is really going to do the job as well. Um, yeah, you're going to smack them. I think, you know, send in some footage, mate. If you're going to get some video, you might as well get some video so we can all enjoy you watching you smack some pigs. But, yeah, any one of those calibers, man, will will uh, do the job for sure. Uh, again, Putrid again continued. Uh, I already have a 22, 308, and a couple of 12Gs. 12 gauges, obviously. Thoughts? I like the idea of the 4570, mainly because I'm overcompensating <laughs> in other areas. <laughs> but feeding it will be the cost. Yeah, mate. Absolutely. Uh, you man, if you've got anything close to 3030, I'd go the 4570. If you don't have anything close to the 4570, uh, then. You know, sorry, sorry, the 30-30, then I'd go 30-30. It's going to be a bit cheaper. Mate, it's still going to hit them hard, mate. 30 cow bullet under 100 metres. Beyond that, it, it turns into a bit of a lead balloon. So, But anything up to about 100, man, I think you're really good to go. Um, you know, And again, minute of pig, mate, is the is the best thing you can do. Don't have to sit there and you know aim for massive accuracy. Hit them in the vitals behind the shoulder, and it's going to be lights out. Um, again, putrid chassis over stock every time just for the shit you can fit after. Love my savage stealth and M lock system. Yeah, man, I agree with that. I got the M lock on the LSS for the front rail works perfectly, man works perfectly. So I'm really keen to, to, uh, get it out and have a, a shot with it as well. So anyway, putrid, let us know what you get, man. If you're going to get the 3030 or the 4570. All right. Scrolling down. Now, sorry about this, guys. Hopefully, Aaron returns soon. We've got Phantom HD. Hi, all. How you going, mates? Hardcore unit by both. Yep, I agree, man. Nothing wrong with, you know, your long-range shooting in chassis and um, stuff like that. Um, I think both of them are going to do the good job, man. Again, it's all going to come down for fit for purpose and, you know, whatever's going to suit your needs when you're out in the field. You're not going <laughs> to – I know a guy that actually carries a chassis <laughs> – uh, down in the field, man, and mate, he'll walk 10, 12, 15 kilometers with that heavy barreled varmint. I reckon he's crazy, man. But, um, yeah, all right, Aaron, we're down to okay. 701, mate. 701 p.m. Happy Hunter. Sweet, I must apologize, everyone, for that. Um, okay, well, I'm on the laptop, so we're back to normal. The internet yeah. connection here is really, really bad. I think you do. I think you got a better Wi Fi card on that, um, 
on that laptop, dude. So you probably need to win. I think we both need to look at probably hardwired connections, man. They're so much better than Wi-Fi and it's unreliable. And, you know, even China is bloody has got better internet than we do. I oh, know. It's shocking. And every time it rains, it all craps out on me. But, yeah. uh, yes, I must apologise, guys. But uh, I can only see from 715 outdoor Tasmanian life. Just wait. Would you want me to keep going through? I'll keep going them and then I'll answer them. We only got about, oh, shit, yep. we've got a few there. I'll just keep going. Anyway, happy Hunter. How you doing, bud? Welcome back. Victoria is turning to shit again thanks to Corona. <laughs> I'm uh, shitting bricks about being locked out of my pistol club again. Too many grubs in this state, mate. Comrade Dan, man, I mean, I'm not going to go too much into it, but it's like 80 cop cars surrounding a housing commission building in Victoria. I mean, you know, it's just. You know, I'm, I'm sort of anti that sort of stuff. I think there's better ways to deal with it. But, you know, anyway, this is a gun show, so we're not going to go into uh, politics. Kings of Kenilworth, hi, guys. Nye Frenzy, hello. Chris uh, Miller, who was one of our super chats. Thanks, buddy. Yep, um, looking at being my first chassis rifle next month. Aaron's probably for you. The LA-105 in uh, 308. You cannot go past that awesome off-the-shelf Chazzy rifle. Very nice stock. Of course, Australian made rifle, made down in Lithgow. Uh, 308, very nice round too. Uh, yep, and it is um, not as heavy as you think it is because that stock is quite a light stock. It's not like a really solid metal stock. Um, it is solid though, but it uh, isn't as heavy as other chassis rifles. But very nice. You've seen me shoot it. I had the 6.5 punching stuff out to over a kilometre. Hitting little fire extinguishers. Yep, very nice rifle. Very, very accurate too. Uh, Jason's tried it. I uh, used it at Christmas time. Uh, I'm yeah. pretty sure he liked it. Yeah, man, not bad. All right, yeah, who else we've got? Nice we've course. got Big Chief said hello. Two Wheel Demon, good morning. So where you're from, Two Wheel? Probably America or something if it's morning. It's night over here. Uh, Decker Hex, hey, guys. Neil Constantin now. Hey, boys, love the show. Thanks, Neil. Um, I'm not going to go past that one because that's not really you know, that that exciting or worth talking about. Um, just going down, guys. G'day from Locker Down, Victoria, SS. <laughs> uh, our buddy, Explosive Bagara B14, or sorry, uh, Bagara HMR operator. Greetings from the red zone in Melbourne. <laughs> Are you in one of those lockdown uh, postcodes, mate, in um in, in uh, Melbourne, uh, let us know if you are because, man, you guys are in the shit for the next six weeks, that's for sure. Um, well, what I'm thinking about, are they going to stop all this uh, mandatory shooting stuff now they're locked down yet again after the financial year? They haven't said anything about that, have they? Yeah. No, no, man, it's just, it's, mate, it's really bad what's happening now. It's only going to get worse. I mean, this could be the new norm moving forward. I mean, this is what they do. They take away your liberty and then start making it the norm. And, of course, the dumb sheep people do exactly as they're told and no one fights back against this sort of draconian stuff. And then, you know, they it's like the gun shops. We, me and Aaron said that. They will try to do what they do and then they see how far they can push you and see what you'll actually do. And then guess what they did three weeks after Corona's finished? They banned eight guns in Western Australia. So... Yes, you know, definitely. Yep, no, it's um, definitely a, a bad state. Yeah, couple, we'll probably about four or five, mate, before we get up to where you are, and you can put them back on screen. Um, explosive again, Bagara HMR. Can you guys do an episode about self defense? Yeah, I think we can do that in the future, man, for sure. Um, Jay Rush again with the super chat, mate. So thanks for that for about the uh, Howard APC in 308. Yep, yep mate, 100% agree. Um, Decker Hex, are there any Australian gunsmiths who can make customised stocks, in particular a Mossberg 464 SPX style telescoping buffer tube stock for a Marlin 1894? I don't know, Aaron, you might know someone. I don't know anyone offhand. No, I've been approached by one young guy here in Brisbane about making stocks, but I never really heard from him again. He was making fiberglass stocks for Rem 700s, so I don't really know what happened to him. Uh, he sounded like a very nice guy on the phone, but not really too sure. As for stock making, I really don't know. It, I don't. I, there's so many aftermarket stocks out there. I don't think it's very um, price competitive to make them here. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> this is an interesting one. ABCD says, I went to SSAA today as a member and thought it was a free to use the gun range. Met for members. What the, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the dollars, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Follow the money. <laughs> 
Follow the money. All right, mate. Are you? Um, we're back up to thanks to all the super chats. They just come up from Ollie Bren, Hardcore Unit, uh, and Gary Koch VK three P G K. If I've got that correct. So, mate, if you've got if you're there at Outdoor Tasmanian Lifestyle and preparedness, yep. you can throw that one up and, and then over oh, to you definitely. again, man. But first, I'll read a couple of Patreons. I've had two Patreons tonight. One wasn't really a question. It's just something, you know, this is what makes it all worthwhile, That what you and me do, Jason. It's not about the money because, A, we, we don't really make any money. Uh, B, it's, uh, it's not about getting free stuff because we don't really get much free stuff. Um, we get helped out a bit. But uh, it's about this, I reckon. This is what really does make my day when I get messages like this. Uh, no question tonight. This is from Mick Beckers. No, no question tonight. Just a massive shout out to you, you both for putting these Thursday night shows on. Everyone else, if you like the content, show some support for the boys and throw a few bucks away on Patreon or Super Chat. Uh, every dollar counts uh, towards a oh, towards some ammo for a review. Well, that's true. That's where all this money goes pretty much on buying ammo for the reviews. And uh, that's extremely nice of Mick. Very, very kind of him. And we have Happy Hunter, who's a big fan of the show, and he's um, comes across as a very, very nice guy as well. Uh, I don't know if he asked this in here while I was um, being stuffed up with the internet, but could you have – you couldn't have said it better, Mick, from above. Uh, I just threw some 308 brass in the wet tumbler. Should be a good – Good and shiny by the end of the show. I'll be pushing out a few rounds for the 686 on Saturday. Only 45 minutes till showtime. Uh, see you, Jace. See you and Jace shortly. Question Can I legally put a semi auto Savage A17 in a chassis, or would it be best to chuck it into a Boyd's thumb hole stock? So I don't know if he did answer, ask that, uh, but on here, but. Yes, you I'd can. Probably, yeah, you can, but I'd probably say, listen, if it's semi-auto, I mean, I mean, I guess they do in AR-style platforms. I mean, either way, man, what are you going to do with it? Are you walking around? Are you just plinking? You know, that's something for you guys to, to I guess, think about what you're going to do with it and what you know, what fit for purpose. But sitting down, bit of target shooting, man, probably chassis, if you're going to actually seriously think about hunting in it. I mean, the Boyd's stocks aren't too expensive. They're a good price for what they are. I've had a Boyd stock, and it was made nothing wrong with it at all. It was really good. So that was on the CZ455 until I sold it to a mate and got the 457. So, Well, my yeah. advice is, you, uh, from what I've heard, from what I've been told, but we're no lawyers. We're no, nothing like that. So don't take it for gospel what we say. But you can modify your uh, chassis and, and bling it up if you like once you are licensed for that category and you've brought it. It's your private property. You can you can put a, a different chassis on if you want. A, mm. the chassis are easier to use uh, as well, I find, because if you've got longer arms like me, you can get that length of pull. Uh, as I say, you spent so much money to get a cat C and D. I say pimp those fuckers out big time. <laughs> and Chuck uh, everything onto it. <laughs> Dave Hubner, six dollars five ninety nine from Dave Hubner. No question on the super chat, but uh, yeah, good on you, dude. Nice work, man. Thank you very much, Dave. Thank you. Just so one you question said, at the top where it says the private chat and live comments. Are you seeing him to pop up the top there, the big round circles, or no? Uh yes, I am now. It just came up. There's a little click bit on of that. lag here. Yeah, up. Click on that. Does that come up if you click it? Yeah, but it doesn't come up in the comments down here. Right. I've got to wait yeah. till I get there. Yeah, well, as they come up, guys, on top of the screen, when we see them, we'll just read them off the top. But as they come down, well, then we'll go through them down there. But we'll try and address the question straight away because I don't know why it disappears, man. It's ridiculous, this app, but it's pretty good. Other than that, we should email their IT department and say, WTF, StreamYard, get your free yeah. shit sorted out. <laughs> exactly. You know, to pay for this, which I can do better graphics and get rid of that duck above Jason's head. It's like 500 bucks a year, guys. Yeah, that one over there, that way. No, hang on. That way. That way. <laughs> yep. It's uh, 500 bucks a year, to basically just to get rid of that. So, uh, yeah, and, I, I, and you get other perks as well. Yeah. So, I think we need to uh, do Dude, man, I'm scrolling down. We've got heaps of questions, okay. dude. So we it's might have not- to do the um, rapid fire, <laughs> rapid fire yeah. early. 
<laughs> exactly. Okay, here we go. It's a very personal preference. I hated my 308 Tika T3X CTR stock, as you would. Uh, put it in a Master PS Arms BA chassis. I like those chassis. They are very nice. And uh, absolutely love it. Now it is a little heavy and manage but manageable for for full day hunt. Well, it's good. Yeah, they're nice chassis. I don't yeah. blame you taking out of the CRT stock. I'm not really a fan of those stocks, to be quite honest with you. Yeah. Go to that one a couple down, um, the outdoor one. He just wants to know what my channel is. It's an interesting one. Yeah. yeah. It's just AHP space outdoors, man. So, you know, like I don't put much up in that. It's just when I get the opportunity. I mean, I used to do uh, – most people probably don't know, but I used to film a lot of wedding videos years ago. So, you know, I do like the editing process, man. I don't do it much now because I'm doing the show, but – you know, if, if something comes up and someone offers something, then I've, I've, I've done them as well. Probably two years ago I did one. So, but, yeah, AHP Outdoors, man. Next. Okay. Uh, of course, we have Demir. Uh, thank you very much, Demir, for that. He is um, the owner of the video of the chassis building uh, that we are going to be releasing tomorrow, tomorrow's review on. Yeah, Southern you, Cotton yeah. All Arms, you know, so check yeah. him out if you want to get a chassis. Um, hit him up. Yep. Okay, now this comes up every week. Uh, <laughs> go, go see your gun store. That's it. I don't know where to get them from, apart from go see your gun store and they'll sort you out. <laughs> uh, and that's all that Jason and me know. Yeah. Um, Chris Miller can't spend the cash and rain, so here you go, lads. Thank you very much, Chris. And from Demir, Aaron, I still need to send you some more goodies. Keep for um, keep forgetting. Oh well, that'll be awesome. Hey, Your him. Don't worry about him. I'm the <laughs> I'm the brains of this operation. Yes, well, I agree totally. Uh, Jason uh, does <laughs> pitch in, does pitch in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's pretty much 50-50 with ideas and everything we do here. So it's pretty good. Now, Jason helps out a lot with this. Takes a lot of load off me. Um, yes, that would be great, Demir. Uh, I'm actually getting your chassis seracoded right now in a very awesome camouflage. Yeah. Yeah, there anyway, go. a bit further, dude. We've got – sorry, we've got a bunch of questions. Just people uh, saying – $20. Why is shooting so expensive? 20 rounds, 30-30. $39, mm. crazy. Yep. Some of the prices are getting up there. And we, we can show on that, but what we're going to do is we're going to talk about that as well because we're going to talk about the price of shooting going up. And I know some guys currently that have sort of been priced out of the out of the shooting sports because they simply just can't afford it. So maybe that's a discussion for the next show. Yes, definitely. Just going down here. Uh, <laughs> there you go, Jason. Yeah, he's been compromised, guys. He's been compromised by the police and the government. Yeah, if they <laughs> kick down my door, guys, and shoot me and kill my dog, well, I don't have a dog anymore. He died. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. So here yeah. we go. Rob's all working. Hi, guys. I hear the Cater Party is pushing for instant PTAs at gun shops, similar to America's background checks. Awesome. That would be fantastic, and I'd love to see it all around the country, just not in Queensland. Very good idea. No reason why they cannot do it. No reason whatsoever. I just got going back to that one though. I'd just like to see some, you know, some actual. Like I like Bob, as I said before, he's a really nice guy. Um, you know, he's he's a he's a funny guy. He likes to have a bit of a laugh, and he's a good shooter. Sorry, advocate for shooters. But I'd also like to see him actually introduce some type of legislation. I mean, he's been in Parliament for a fair while, almost fifty years, and. I want to start seeing some legislation from the guy tabled onto the floor of parliament, not just, you know, talking about it and being a good advocate, actually making a difference and introducing some legislation and trying to get support for that legislation. So yes, anyway, we'll, let's hope, let's hope that, that uh, happens in the future. Yep. Hey there, does anyone actually use a chassis system and what brand is best? Okay. Well, have you talked about your CZ one? 
Yeah, I did. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say there's any best man. Or just how much do you want to pay? That's the that's the question. Yeah. If you pay more, you're going to get something better. If you pay less, you're probably not going to get something as good. You know, there's you, you got your brands out there that are you know well known, of course. You know, your your MDTs and those types of things. You've got heaps of different styles. You've got the Southern Cross Small Arms. You've got you know all different types of uh, you know chassis style systems out there. Take your pick, man. If you if you like something and you're looking at it. Just buy it, dude. Don't listen to what we say. Buy what you want. That's what I always say. Okay, I just got to throw something funny in here. Left, I left to buy a new chair. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, it's creaking. It's obviously, obviously you didn't because I can still hear it creaking. It is coming. It is coming soon. I promise. Uh, okay, here we go. It's talking about how bad my internet is. Yeah, but then again, you'd look at um Demir's uh, stocks he sells. He makes them for a variety of rifles: Tika, Sauer, Remington, uh, a couple others, and uh, they are really well priced. They're like, I think they're sub, I think they're around the six hundred dollar mark. Um, please, Demir, put your price up on here and tell everyone how much they are. Uh, but they're really good pricing for what you get, hey. Uh, I know they're a lot cheaper than the MDT stuff. To be honest, um. No, some his chassis looks like some of the MDT, and it's about four or five hundred bucks cheaper. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah, we've got heaps of questions, dude. You guys are going insane at the moment. It's just oh, it is. It every just week, we're, we're, every week we sit here thinking, oh, geez, I hope people ask questions. <laughs> what do you do when you actually get like twenty thousand or something? You got like you just can't keep up with the comments. Like you can't even get through like five percent of the comments. Oh, we might have to um, do one a night. I think. <laughs> I got no idea. Oh, I'm, I can't wait to cross that bridge. To be quite honest, I am pushing six thousand subscribers. So I had twelve thousand before I caught the YouTube flu and my channel was gone. Uh, so I'm halfway back to what I got. So when I do reach it, I'm going to do something very special. So please subscribe to the channel right now. No excuse. We have about five hundred people coming in and out of these chats each week. So if you could. Um, if everyone hit the subscribe button, I'll be back to 12,000 in no time. What's the mm. deal with people taking wood off um, SMLEs? Disgraceful. I agree 100%. It is not good. Uh, yeah. I, Shazzy, you know, like and put, <laughs> I don't think you can anyway. Maybe you can. I don't know. I don't think you can, but it'd be interesting to see, <laughs> you know, what those SMLEs and like a Shazzy. Wouldn't that be funny? Yeah, we've got a, an ATI. I think they make a, uh, a stock for it, uh, but a, just a normal hunting stock, plastic. I did. A, I've got a um, off the shelf up here on the channel if you want to go see it. Yeah, not my thing, but I do think keep them original because I restored one and love it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Where do you shoot at explosive? <laughs> 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 oh, sorry, yes, yes. Uh, man. Don't worry about I don't that. Have, I don't have any explosives. I do shoot a few small camping butane canisters, which is a hundred percent legal. I've been. I even asked the police and weapons licensing if that was okay, and they said yes. <laughs> so no, no yeah. explosives here whatsoever. Yeah, we don't shoot anything illegal. That's for sure. We don't. We tell people to obey the law. Yep. Okay, explosive. You go, Jace. So he says he's at private property or state forest SSA range in Little River is doing his head in. So I guess he's shooting at private property. The old Bagara HMR, one of our uh, big supporters here on the live stream. Yes, he is. He's um yeah top bloke. Um, private property or state forest. Uh, well, I'd say if you can get on private property, do it. There you go. If you go a couple down, old Dave Hubner, yes, Aaron, if you need that. a lucky to run a hard line internet connection, let me know. Hit him up. Okay. Dave, yep. he needs I, got a connection. I got tomorrow off work, so I'll book you in. Are you, are you in Brisbane? Send me um, an email or through Facebook, send me a message or Instagram, and I'll contact you. I'm in Brisbane or just out of Brisbane, not far from it. So please hit me up. Awesome. I'll take you up on that instantly. I had a guy lined up and the fucker never showed up. Two weeks ago, I'm still waiting. Uh, Mate, trades these days, I tell you what, it's, you know, I've been talking to people, sending emails, wanting to buy gun products, and 
mate, these companies in Australia, some that don't even get back to you. And I'm like, you're running a business, man. Like, you know, I'm, I want to buy your products. I can't even buy their products. But anyway. I sit in the building trade all the time. I don't quote jobs and the owners, the houses say, oh, no, other guys never even showed up. They said they're coming. They never showed up. So I get the job. Everything mm. leads into something bigger, I find. Uh, Demir. Um, Interesting trend in hunting chassis setups. Uh, short barreled rifles, 18 inch, even 16 inch. Most of the weight is in the steel barrels. This is true. Yeah, this is true. I've seen New Zealanders, I think they call them the bush pig rifles. They're getting like, you know, Howers, Tickers, Remingtons, whatever. They're cutting them down to that, you know, 18 inch, 16 inch, and throwing a a suppressor or an over or an over barrel suppressor on the end of them down to say 18 inch, 20 inch, whatever their specific is, 16 inch, and they're throwing an over barrel suppressor on them. And uh, yeah, this man, they're kicking ass. They, you know, like smashing deer at, you know, five, six hundred meters. So, uh, very, very nimble way to walk around with the gun. It's light, it's maneuverable through thick scrub. Fantastic. And uh, yeah, Demir's right on that. A lot of people are doing that at the moment. So, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, unfortunately, suppressors don't see them coming here, but we have got a show coming up soon about suppressors. So, yeah, we'll talk more in depth about it then. Uh, there you go, Jason. So, who we got here, Matty Boy? Hi, guys. I've got an LA 102 and 65 Creedmoor, and I'm interested in doing some hunting, but not sure what suit the load. What would you recommend? Now, Aaron, again, I know what I already know what Aaron's going to say here, but I would say, you know, if it's specifically going to be for hunting, I like my 143 grain ELDX, but. If I had my way, because I do a bit of you know, the long range shooting with it, I'd probably use the 140 grain Hornady ELD match. Now, Aaron's going to say uh, 147, 100%, but the BC is still good on the um, 140 grain Hornady ELD match. That's what I would go for. Uh, I do run the 143 grain ELDX in my 260 Remington, but like I said, if I had my time over, the uh, ELD match is 140. I'll still knock down game. I think there's a guy on the internet. should check him out. He's in New Zealand. His name is Nathan Foster. And uh, if you check out his YouTube channel, just type in Nathan Foster, F-O-S-T-E-R, or Forster, whichever one, check it out. You'll see him come up, and he long-range shoots in New Zealand. And when he sh shoots the goats, he goes up with them, capes them out, shows you the bullet damage for the match bullets, and, yeah, it'll just liquefy his body parts, those ELD match bullets. So don't feel like you're going to be undergun, mate, that's for sure. No, uh, well, if I had the other computer working so I could bring up a photo of what I'm getting out of the 147th at a kilometre and groups oh, about that sort of big, 200 mils consistently. And I mean consistently. Uh, but I think both of them will work, as Jason, Jason's right. Uh, they will all work. They will all work. Those uh, those Hornady projectiles. So, and I'm running yeah. the 200. And I'm running the 162 grain ELDX in the – seven mil rem mag but again that's just my hunting um, 10 15 shots a year if i'm lucky um but anything where you're going to shoot a fair bit or might be a bit of a crossover rifle i'd use 140 man good bc i think almost close to 670 or 700 close to there about 650 to 700 mate you're not going to go wrong good hitting power mate if you're shooting smaller game too it's just going to smack them yep exactly Okay, Brownies 001, any news on the range Shooters Union were building up North Brisbane? No, no news at all. Haven't heard anything. Uh, so I didn't even hear that they're going to do one, to be quite honest with you. Uh, it must cost a lot of money, so I don't know where they're getting the money from for a start. They must be producing quite a lot in membership fees. Uh, I'd much rather see that, to be personally, I'd much rather see that go towards fighting some of these stupid laws. Uh, myself, because that's what the union's for, standing up for us. So I'd like to see that before they actually built a range. That's just my personal opinion. People might disagree, but I think it's important to start hitting hard against these laws. And if you call yeah. yourself a union, start fighting for us. Uh, sorry for a little rant, but that's just my feelings. Okay, yeah. actually, you're right. We do have a lot of questions here. Head under Aussie. Uh, 
Capitalist, he makes a good point yeah. too. Aussie Capitalist, so, yeah, he said, to hell with what we have, let's get what we lost. True, a lot of people seem to think, I'm just going to say one quick one on that one. People are always saying, you know, let's keep what we have. You know, we need to maintain what we have. That's the thing, guys. We are not maintaining what we have. Gun ban after gun ban. I mean, are people asleep or, or what's happening here? I see shooters all the time on the internet, Facebook, or comments. Oh, I've got to keep what we have. We're not. Where have you been? Sleeping? Yeah. Having a nap? Um, are you do you do you look at the news? Do you watch channels like this? Do you listen to podcasts like mine? Do you go on Facebook? I mean, guys, eight guns in WA. I mean, wake up. What time to wake up, guys? Yep, exactly. Uh, Jason and me can only say so much. And people say us, what are you guys doing about it? Well, what are we doing? We're bring them to you. Several videos, several podcasts a week to you guys. That's what we're doing. We're spending all our free time trying to get this information out to you. We're not mm. getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars a year or up to millions of dollars a year. And as an organisation saying we're going to fight for you, we just bring you information and do our best for you guys. And, uh, yeah, it's time these guys start, you know, growing some balls and fighting for us, literally. And uh, like I said, I did say this before the corona. I said, wait until the corona's finished. It'll be a catalyst to what they're going to do to us after. And what do we have? Two to three weeks later. Not They normally do one gun when they reclassify. Eight, whatever that is, eight doing guns, up yeah. in eight twenty-four guns. hours. In twenty-four hours, if that's not bad enough, guys, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, you know, again, people have got to get their heads out of the sand. Yeah, I agree totally. Guys, uh, it's this again. Uh, we need a modern, more friendly run shooting range here in Melbourne. I don't know much about Melbourne. I don't really know uh, what the ranges are like down there. But uh, yeah, I, I hope. I don't know what how WSAA have stuff for as many independents, but you, you definitely need. Uh, I saw some of his comments before saying that uh, yeah, some of the ranges aren't too good. So you, you definitely need a good range, good friendly range. You can just do what you want, basically. Load up your mag, do mag dumps, do whatever you want, really. Yeah. It's all about being a bit of freedom. Okay, there we go. Yeah, if everyone stopped going to WSAA Rangers and stopped paying membership to them, maybe something like uh, Shooting Council will take over and make things better for everyone. Yeah, I actually agree with that. That's mm. for sure. Like, we're not saying they're going to be the be-all and end-all either, you know, but at least they're no. trying, guys. At least they're doing something. People go, oh, what's the point? It's not going to go anywhere. But as opposed to what? Just doing absolutely nothing. I would have them try and fail and and – praise them for that than just go, oh, well, it's too difficult. Let's do nothing. I mean, you know. Exactly, exactly. And, yeah, I'm a member of WSAA. Paying to use the range is making me consider membership. I don't see why you belong to a club. Then you've got to pay to go shoot at the club. To me, it's ridiculous. Mm. It shouldn't happen. If you belong to a club, that should be it. You just go every day. Exactly. Show me the money. I mean, we're not okay. saying that people got to have a range, you know, people got to make money and make it affordable, but, you know, 30 something dollars every when you go to a range, that's what's here in Sydney. You go $25, $30 to go to the range. You want to do three or four load tests, man. It's, you, you, the money's building up, but Sergeant Sirius, I like that name. How is it that you, us law abiding firearms owners, aren't even considering the eradication proposal of feral cats in the country? They'd rather lay baits and kill everything that eats meat with 1080. Yeah, well, you know, governments don't like us, um, you know, and there's a video, as I said, there's a video that talks about this. I'll, I might even link it later on in the show, um, you know, when Aaron, you know, they talk about this sort of stuff where the government just doesn't care about you, you know, police don't care about what we want. They just don't care. Um, they'll keep pushing people and pushing people and pushing people and pretty much the, the story is there's absolutely nothing we can do about it because we can't fight back. You know, you get fight back, you get your skull cracked. You know what I mean? If you, you know, yeah. you're going to go to prison, you know what I mean? If they take your camera, they're just going to do it anyway. So, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a bad situation of affairs at the moment, guys. But that's why we're doing this show, bring a bit of fun into people's lives. Exactly. Yep. I, uh, yeah, they do it because they, they just see shooters and they've said it before, like with the pistols on private land. We don't want a bunch of cowboys pretending to be a cowboy riding around on motorbikes with a pistol on private land. Completely stupid. Yet again, that's another video we can talk about, the laws of pistols, which is uh, are just shocking in this country. Uh, evening, mate. I have a Ruger Precision Rimfire in 22. So do I. It's set up with a bipod and a monopod. Great little rifle. I have a 4 to 24, which I'm going to swap out for a 4 to uh, 1 to 4 times or a red dot. 
any ideas welcome well i've been using a few of the bushnell red dots um which is good and i do hear an australian uh company is gonna be producing some red red dots coming out soon but i'm not going to say who they are until they come out uh but yeah i've been using the little bushnell ones about 200 i can't remember the exact um, idea of them you'll see them on some of the shotgun reviews but uh for and me uh Four to twenty-four is probably a bit, you know, for twenty depends how far you're shooting. I guess probably a bit overkill, but you know, hey, if it works, dude, mate, enjoy, enjoy, and you know, crack a coldy after you've had a shoot and put the gun away. Yeah, I've got um a four to twenty-four on my uh, Ruger Precision Rimfire because I try and push that thing out a little bit further. Uh, but yeah, I'd go the the one to four rather a red dot any day if you want a bit closer range. At least you got a little bit of magnification there. Uh. Geez, we do have a um, yeah. <laughs> Dave Hubner. Thank you very much for the five ninety nine super chat. One step closer to a new chair and internet connection. I think is going to be before the chair. <laughs> um, can you do both, hey Dave? Even if you charge him, get get it done for him and hurry, you know, so we can get that freaking chair, man. Oh, every week, creak, 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 man. Doesn't matter. Anything. Yeah, um, yeah. Might have be the way the way things are going right now. It might be a time payment, but yeah, yeah please get hold of me, Dave. Um, it's not as bad now. You got that headset; it's blocking a fair bit of it out. So at least that's good for me and the listeners. Yeah, uh, guys, what are, what are your guys' opinion on the M twenty twelve tactical the Colt? Well, if it's the one I'm thinking of, I've shot one once and I can't get my hands on it anymore, unfortunately. I really want to do a review on it. Uh, it is very nice. They stopped making them. So, yeah, they are nice. Very, very pricey. I do think they're overpriced for what they are. But, yeah, a very nice gun. Do you know anything about them, Jason? No, nah, man. That's your area of expertise, not mine, unfortunately. Yeah, they are nice. But, uh, yeah, I don't think they're making them anymore. Here you go, Jace. All right, Paul. Hi, guys. Look at getting a 2 to 3 Hauer action. What kind of chassis is available? That is ambidextrous. I'm right-handed person that shoots left-hand dominant. Um, yeah, good question. I don't know about left-handed. There's always you khaki-handed bastards that are left-handed. Um, I know Aaron's got to shoot left-handed now because of his uh, eyes. So I don't know, man. Just ring up your gun shops. Find out. Um, obviously, right-hand. Most people are right-handed. So... You know, they, but they do make some shadow. I'm pretty sure they make some left-handed ones. I know, I think GRS makes some left-handed ones. Um, no, so, oh, yes, I do, yes, yes. I think they do. So Because i got a couple of GRS berserks, and I think they do a left-handed one. I'm pretty sure because I'm sure I was looking for one ages ago, and they it was left-handed. I was going to buy it, but uh, unfortunately it was left-handed, so that's no good. And uh, uh, oh, Sorry, yes. No, yeah, you go, you go. Uh, but I don't find it bad shooting left-handed with a right-handed gun. I really don't. Hunting... I thought I'd really struggle, but I have not struggled at all. And I've actually started getting better groups in my long range shooting going to left handed, but I still I have all right handed guns. So it doesn't really affect me at all, even when you're hunting, because as you know, we can't have semi autos. So you're still going to have, no matter what, you're going to have to rack the bolt and you're only going to get one animal down pretty much anyway in most situations because it takes too long to reload to get the uh, follow up shot. So to be honest, mate, don't be too wrapped up if you're left-handed getting a uh, getting a left-handed gun because I have no problem. I thought I'd really struggle switching over to left-handed, and I've been, after being shooting for almost thirty years, right-handed, and it but really hasn't forget, affected me at all. If you get the GRS, the, the palm swell is the specific way you can't shoot that left That's left what? handed but don't forget if you're shooting a chassis with a pistol grip probably not going to be a problem but if you get a specific stock that's got the palm wheel molded for right handers like forget about it. it's not going to work so just remember go in see if you've got one have a look on the internet youtube is your best bet as well just jump on and have a look and see what how they think because you don't want to buy one and go oh it's left-handed because the palm swell is for right-handed it's not going to work you know a standard your hunting stock might be all right or a pistol grip chassis but i don't i don't think for like grs or those types of stocks like you know manners or boyds or those types of things so yeah well uh, that's what happened by 300 rum i just bought the grs stock which is such a of jason's recommendation Oh, a beautiful stock. Fit my right hand perfectly, right eye, beautiful, everything. 
And then my eye crapped out, I had to go left-handed, and you, it's molded for the right hand and a right-handed bolt. They don't have a left-handed side and for a right-handed bolt, so yeah. they take it off, and I haven't and shot that was the run. That was the GRS Bifrost, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, beautiful stuff. I think they make fantastic stocks, GRS. I really do. There we go, Dave. Uh, you always answer my questions, so just giving it back. Thumbs up. Thank you, Dave. Here we go. I want to collect World War One slash two semi autos, wouldn't we all? That's what's the easiest path of obtaining a Cat D ticket in Queensland, so I can collect these things fully operational condition. Well, if you've got to spare a couple of million dollars, buy uh, something over five thousand acres is the easiest way. Then you can apply for it. Otherwise, you're just gonna have to get um, a collector's license and I think here in Queensland they got to, they can't be operational and you can't shoot them so it's sort of deceptive yeah, even, even I used to have my cat day years ago even if you get um, farm it's only primary producer cat C so you and as far as New South Wales but I think it's similar you'll only be allowed one semi-automatic or pump shotgun and then one rimfire semi-automatic 22 you won't be allowed center fire um, semi-automatics on a Cat C primary producer license. So you'll have to, you know, start a business, start getting contracts, do your tax, um, provide contracts from farmers. Uh, yeah, man, it's it's a pretty arduous task to actually do. So anyway, it's yeah. um, if, yeah. if you want to go know. through that, start a business, register your business, get your contracts, uh, lodge it, uh, do your tax check, get a tax uh, letter from your tax agent. That's pretty similar to what we do down here. And you should be fine to be able to get it, but just um, you know, if you got if you got what they need, you'll get it. Simple as that. They can't they can't stop you because it's there and it's available. And then the cat D, you only have two cat D guns, one main one and a backup, and that's it. But if you do in Queensland, if you buy enough land, which I think it's over five thousand acres, which you'll spend several million dollars on buying it, and you can prove there's a pest control, you can get a semi-auto center fire for that property. So you can only you'll only be allowed one or maybe two center fires for that property, but they'll cost you millions. Basically, take that money and go overseas and spend it in the US, shooting all their guns unrestricted and full auto. Be a lot cheaper in the long run. Uh, so it's just another way that we'll talk about in future videos about how they are losing the government are losing so much money from these stupid gun bans that do not work. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes, I saw this today. <laughs> Me too. Go, yeah, uh, over 8 million firearms sold in the USA in the last three months, going to be the biggest selling year in history. God bless America. It was interesting because I saw a tweet from Pierce Morgan. If you remember him, he used to be on CNN and uh, was you know, basically blabbing and shit talking guns, you know, pretty much on every show. Um, he made a tweet about it, you know, how sad and depressing it was. I'm like, this is awesome, dude. Like, you know, like when they, this is the problem. When they start talking about banning guns, people just start buying and buying and buying. I mean, Barack Obama was already um, the biggest gun salesman in history. So now with COVID, it's just flying off the shelf in their millions. So, you know, again, people get upset with America because it's the land of the free. I mean, they want us to be like us, you know, slaves and, and convicts that, um, you know, just have to listen to government and government knows best. Obviously, they don't, but, you know. <laughs> exactly. Here we go. Uh, Southern Cross Small Arms make an awesome stock, not to mention Aussie Made, and we always support Aussie Made, and yes, they do. Here we go. Just uh, Aussie Capitalist. Cat D costs about $1 million to buy a big property. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One day I'll have to win that lottery and buy a big farm, and then you know what we'll do? We'll invite all the live streamers down there to shoot. That's what we'll do. If so, We'll supply millions of rounds. Yeah. You just, yep, definitely. Exactly. Uh, okay, just going through something. Some of a bit of a banter between people. Uh, sorry, guys. Just... Also, Sorry. going to that guy about that. Um, remember that uh, magazine that he kept asking for week in, week out? So, yeah, yeah he's talking about uh, Cleaver in, in um, Queensland. So, you said they might have it at 80 bucks. So, there you go. Re Ring those guys and see if they've got one for you. That's one's for Demir. I uh, don't know if you can, if you have, make anything or going to make something. It'll be interesting to see. But I know I, uh, the 783 don't have magazines that would. So, yeah, I don't know how that would work. You'd have to have a, a base plate, I think. Uh, okay, yeah. going down here. 
Let me just while you that, I'll say Clark too said sorry for being late. I was out having dinner, mate. Hope you had a great dinner. And uh, Brian Preston, good morning from Louisiana. Yes, yes, welcome to the show. Yes, and good evening from Brisbane and Sydney in Australia, Brian. Yep. Yeah. Um, nice for you to join us. Thank you very much. I am. I would love to go to the south. New um, Orleans, Louisiana. Louisiana. Oh, yes. Or is it New Orleans? New Orleans, Orleans, they say, you know. Yeah, and do a bit of um, shooting down there and blow some tanner right up and um, yeah. basically just having some good time. Choose Maybe some wrestle, some, uh, wrestle some alligators down there in the – it was at Florida. Could, uh, could be Louisiana too. That sounds good. Yeah, some, some gator <laughs> wrestling will be fun. I reckon it'll be good. Make an interesting <laughs> video. Be fucking short. <laughs> 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 okay, so Demir uh, from Southern Cross Small Arms, uh, TSP X chassis retails for six ninety. Some shots can do better on price, and there you go, Australian made chassis for pretty much all the big brands, including the new Sours, which is very good. So there we go, guys, six ninety for a chassis. You'll see them tomorrow afternoon. I will release the video on his products. Yeah, for some reason, you had a super chat there come up from Hardcore Unit, but um, looks like it's disappeared from the top. It's a little bit down, but don't go down. He just said, oh, don't buy a chair, buy yourself a beer. It was five bucks. So good on you, Hardcore Unit. Thanks for that. Thank you very much. Uh, when I come to it, it hasn't come up the top yet. Uh, it, must, it, must, it must only be when you do it, man, because when I'm scrolling down, I don't get that issue. So. But it doesn't matter anyway because when it comes up at the top there, when it eventually pops up, you can um, just click on it and read it out, then bring it up when you get to it. So that's pretty good. Yeah. This is more for you. You're a bit of the politics side, Jason. I think it's with the normal possibility to stop the registry in the next five years. Mate, I would have said that about probably five years ago. Um, but, mate, we just haven't had any wins on the board in the last 25 years. Really, the only one significant one, I'd say, is public land hunting in New South Wales, which was a you know pretty, pretty milestone thing. But... Uh, you know, fifteen since 15 years since that, especially in New South Wales, we just haven't seen anything get over the line. It's been a very, very slow uh, progression against gun owners like what we're seeing in WA, as I've said previously. Yep. Yep, I agree totally. Um, I, I just uh, Registration leads to confiscation, so registration must go in my books. No questions. Scroll to the uh, not don't scroll to the top, but you got Matty Boy. Uh, he's uh, for another five dollar Patreon. Uh, sorry, Patreon five dollar super chat. So, are you seeing it? Yeah, it just came up. Thanks for answering my question earlier. But I am sorry. What I meant to ask was, what game should I look forward to hunting with a six point five Creedmoor? Oh, anything. pretty, pretty much anything. Yeah, uh, very fast, flat round, and yeah, they'll they'll shred pretty much anything. Yeah, they uh, yeah. they scream. So um, especially, especially within five hundred meters, you'll drop basically anything in Australia yeah. with um, a Creedmoor. I mean, if so, I had to pick, I'd say goats. Um, you know, smallish to medium sized deer. I mean, I had a guy that was on our last varminting trip for the rabbits. And he was using six five Creedmoor one forty three grain factory ammo from Hornady, and uh, smashing rabbits at uh, you know two three hundred meters. So, mate, anything foxes, mate, sky's the limit with six five, mate. Uh, I got to say, I'm really happy with my two sixty. I'm you know the long bullets ballistically fantastic, dude. So, Matty boy. Super chat. Good on you, pal. Yes, thank you so much. I'll bring it up when I get down to it. Uh, ex, um, Demir, from, once again, from Southern Cross Small Arms, he's going to look into what you guys are requesting. Fantastic stuff. So just contact him and see what he can make. And if you've got any questions or anything, just contact him tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, all, by the sound of it, he's always looking for new things to make to help Australian shooters out. Yeah, and tell him if you at uh, Demir, you bastard, right? I was wanted to buy his uh, Night Force ATAC R or ATAC for for a thousand bucks, and the bugger wouldn't sell it to me. So, was <laughs> oh, that the one I got off him for uh, seven hundred? Yeah, uh, he's got it on his three hundred <laughs> win mag. When I went to his uh, uh, factory unit where he makes all the stocks and everything, he, he he's got it on a three hundred win mag, and I said, "Man, I'll give you a thousand dollars for the Night Force," and he goes, "Oh, <laughs> for that price, it's not for sale." <laughs> <laughs> Um, what guns, this is from Outdoor Tasmania, what guns would you use for run and gun target shooting if you only had A or B license for run and gun target shooting? Sort of like PRS stuff, isn't it? Uh, mm. I don't know, something lightweight. 
Uh, yeah, Run and, and, and target shooting doesn't sort of really sort of go together unless you talk about PRS, but, you know, heavy barrel, the 6.5 calibers. I'm looking at a couple of these um, 6.5s, uh, Sherman Wildcats, you know, running 140 and 147s at like 34, 3,500 feet a second. So these Jeez. bloody Sherman Wildcats, man, these, whew, wow, you know. Is that PRC territory? Oh, yeah, I'd run it You're on PRC, dude. The six point five PRC. That's about what twenty eight, twenty nine hundred. What no, three thousand? No, thirty two. Oh, thirty two. Okay. Well, this is gonna be thirty five. So not yeah, bad for a cool. bullet in a six point five. Yep. Yep. Uh, run a gun. Yeah, it's normally used with lighter guns because like you're running fast, stopping, bring it up, shooting some steel plates. So I definitely think just uh, an average sort of hunting rifle myself. I'm looking at and don't scroll down, but Demir says, Jason, no means no on the night force. So, mate, I'm willing to go to 1250. <laughs> I'm willing to go to 1250. That's my final offer. <laughs> now but, you're just violating them. Anyway, I think, man, we've got about 15 minutes left, man, so I think we should just rapid fire quick, quick answers to the rest okay. of the questions if we can get them out. New to chassis shooting, stupid question. Is it a matter of buying a barrel action and chassis or do you – uh, would buy off the shelf uh, rifle, and then um, yeah, I mean if you can buy the Howards, the barrel action, and throw them into a chassis, that's worthwhile too. And me and Aaron were talking about this last week. I'd hope manufacturers will start just making barrel actions for cheaper, so you don't have to buy their stocks if you don't want them, because a lot of people end up replacing them. Should have the option for both, with stock or without stock, just like Howard done. That's a good thing that Howard does actually buying the barrel actions. So I think um, other companies should do that, because what do I want to buy a gun? Pay the extra three hundred dollars for the stock when I'm just going to chuck it away, and you get basically nothing for them. Yes, yep, I agree totally. I agree totally. Let's hit them okay. quick now, man. Let's get okay. all the questions we can. Well, this is interesting from a fifteen-year-old. Go yeah, for it, Jace. I'm fifteen years old. I'm running a seven hundred. I want to shoot precision rifle shooting. Should I use normal synthetic stock or should I get MDT? Man, start shooting right now, dude. With what you got, don't think you need to go out and buy the best shit. Um, no. Don't fall into the trap of all these other guys that yeah you run there. And they've got ten grand's worth of gear. Get what you got right now. Get some good reloads if you can. If, if your dad's reloading for you or something, get your dad down there. Do some reloads. Get there and have fun, dude. Don't fucking buy the best shit you need. Ten grand scopes, you know. Just get out there and have a go, mate. That's you know. Don't think you, you, what you've got right now is going to get you into it. Exactly. Don't listen to these guys who will just voice their opinion. You got to have all the best of everything. Remember, they don't shoot very far in Australia. They're only shooting out to five, six hundred meters. So you don't need a big fandangle thing to shoot that far. Anybody can do it. You'll be able to do it with a bit of practice. It's not that far. Go right, another one for you, Jace. I have a Mossberg you know, 7 mil mag. What ammo should I use? Man, if you're reloading 162 grain ELDX or the 175s, if you got the the you got a Mossberg, so you're not going to have an issue, I don't think, with magazine length. Um, not that I'm familiar too much with the Mossbergs, but, yeah, man, 162 grain ELDX. Um, or I think they make a ELDM as well, close to that. So check out Hornady website. Uh, of course, anything from Sierra. But, again, mate, I just like my Hornady stuff. Always a consistent performer. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Hornady um, for hunting and for target shooting, I do use a lot of Sierra. But, mm. yep, that, Jason's correct on that. At the moment, I would be happy to get rid of appearance laws. What a joke. Yep, that's a very, very easy thing to get rid of because uh, they're not giving us a physical thing back like we're going to give you this gun back. It's just a matter of, okay, no more appearance laws. And in that parents' laws, it should come with uh, adjustable stocks and folding stocks for you guys down in New South Wales that can't have that. It's a very simple thing to give back. It um, would be a gesture of goodwill, but, yeah, don't hold your breath. Exactly. Yep. Agreed. Uh, and here is a hardcore unit. Don't worry about the chair. Buy yourself a beer instead. You're on. I'll be having a beer straight after this show. Um <laughs> Looks like Dave's already sent you a message on um, Messenger, Aaron. So, yeah, hook him up with that wired connection, Dave. Uh, it's certainly going to yep. make a huge difference. We do occasionally we go full nerd and play a bit of Call of Duty online on the Xbox or PlayStation, and uh, we're always getting shitty connections. So. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're going to play after this uh, match, and I'm bound to cop a lot of abuse from Jason about my connection tonight. <laughs> Just scroll up. You missed a few questions too. There's one there from uh, Scott. Kirsten? Yeah, that's what I was looking at. Sorry. 
Yeah, so Scott says, just bought a 455 carbon and 22 LR in an MDT chassis. Never thought of getting a chassis till then. Price was right. Um, do I need to know anything as a first-time chassis owner? Mate, go out there and bang, bang, bang. Shoot the crap yeah. out of it, mate. Run it hard and run it heavy so it knows what it's in for. Yep, I have a 455, I think it is, or a 452. Um, fantastic guns. You don't need it in a chassis, really. If you don't want to, it's, um, yep, they are so accurate. Just get out there and have some fun with it. And uh, sure. Aaron's always cursing me for changing out the stock on my 457, which was that beautiful tiger stripe timber. Oh, oh I didn't mention that. I did sell that. I did sell it. Yeah. Go on, sold it for 250 bucks. Oh, nice. Well, nice for somebody else getting that beautiful timber. Yeah. But, uh, and yeah, I we'll changed the trigger spring on it as well just last week. Oh, mate, it's a crisp one and a half pounds now. Oh, it's delicious. Oh, mate, let's get this fucking travel up so you get back up here to the range and we can uh, have some fun with it. I'm hanging to shoot that in your chassis. It's going to be really, really nice. Uh, uh, what else you got you, there? Okay, we already answered this, but I'll just bring it up. Super chat, thank you so much. All your super chats are really, really appreciated, guys. It really is. Everything helps for the show. I really do appreciate it. And Dave, please put your phone number down in that message so I can give you a call after the show. Uh, yeah, there you go, Jason. Great comment. Government knows best. Best for who is the question? Well, they don't know best for anything, really. I mean, <laughs> they don't do anything really that well at the moment. So um, what do we expect on guns? You know, like I said, when you have bipartisan support for continually screwing shooters in the ass, well, you know, what hope do you have? You know, what hope do you have to get anywhere when both, at least in other countries, when things happen, the oppositions are fighting, you know, the, the other party that's taking our guns off them. Ours, they both just bent over. Yep. Exactly. Uh, and Vic Deer, um, Red and Samba is legal at the moment for 6.5. There we go. No, illegal, illegal. Illegal. Oh, legal. Okay. Yeah, you've got yeah. to do, I think it's Fallow 2, 4, 3 and above. Samba, I don't even know if they've got any Reds down there, but let's say they do. I don't think they do, but Samba 270 and up, guys, so make sure you're using the right colour. I think it's a bit, you know, Samba are big, man. I did some sausage making a couple of weeks ago and um, my mate shot a spiker on his property um, just about 20, 30 minutes outside of uh, Sydney on the south side um, on his big property. And, yeah, man, it's good to see Samba getting up north right not far from Sydney. Really good news. And the, just the leg on the thing, man, was huge. Yep. Yeah, you made a lot of sausages, didn't you? Yeah. Neil Constantin. <laughs> Hi, guys. Is it at all possible that you boys suggest and organize a hunting trip for us live streamers? Mate, it's a, it's a possibility. Anything I can think of, I mean, when you start getting a lot of people with the farmers are not probably going to be happy with some of that. So I've been wanting to do like an AHP one on public land, um, booking into a big state forest and um, having one up north one year and then doing a south, you know, sort of Canberra area, um, Tumbarumba, you know, that's Tumut, that sort of area on the south side the year after, man. So if you get your game license, maybe that's something we might um, do for the future if you guys have got your um, public land hunting license in New South Wales. I'd even consider getting that um, license and coming down as well. Uh, you had to shoot on land that taxpayers already pay for. Uh, uh, How... Anything you can see there, Jace? You already got that one. Just um, uh, Demir saying thanks for the support from Brownies. Don't worry about Brownies, Demir. What about us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need the folding stocks at, um, adapter for your that chassis you uh, sent me. Yeah, and uh, it's going well, to be good to it's going to be good to wait till you get that PRC and get that in that chassis and have a look. It's going to be interesting. So oh, hopefully, you have it back in the next couple of weeks. Yes, definitely. I'm going to call them tomorrow. Um, would you love to? <laughs> would love to see Aaron and Jason have a long range shoot off with lots of sledging. Yep, we've done that, but we actually kept our tongue. Oh, actually, we did abuse each other, but uh, I did cut that out. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah as uh, we had six point five, as a video you'll see it six point five versus six point five Creedmoor versus the what two sixty Grandpa. Hey, there you go. Just I just saw it down under Tassie Preparedness. Marty A. He's actually the guy that bought my four five seven stock. There you go. Bring that one up. Uh, Marty A. There yeah. we go. 
Hi, right, Jason. I bought your four, five, seven stock. Very nice, as you said. Yep, yeah, mate. That's a beautiful stock. I don't lie. I'm, and as Aaron knows, he knows me very well. He puts his guns in the safe. Ah, uh, put them in. Whatever, yeah. mate. I've got them in gun socks. I don't like them touching. I want to look after my gear. So you got a really good stock there, mate. Um, enjoy it. Send through some photos, mate, to either me or Aaron on um instagram or facebook and we'll uh throw it up on maybe the stream in a couple of weeks when you uh if you've yeah. put it in you know put a cz457 it let us know when i get this connection fixed i can start bringing photos up on the computer as well while we're talking okay um, i've reached the bottom so we'll start at the bottom we'll go back up because we've got another 10 minutes pick up anything so demir Jason, email me an address. I forgot about the folding adapter uh, you're getting before they are released. Thank you, Demir. That will be awesome because I'll take it up to the Cerakoter and get it Cerakoted um, ASAP. That will be awesome. I'll give you a yell tomorrow. Yeah, and Chris is saying they do have red, samba, hog deer and fallow in Victoria. I didn't think reds were that low because um, I'm not seeing many reds down here in New South Wales, at least where I go anyway, so – it's good to see, man. It's good to see deer are moving around and, you know, I mean, we're seeing Samba. I mean, closer to getting closer and closer to Sydney. The numbers are up, which is great for hunters. Yep, exactly. Um, Outdoor Tasmanian uh, seemed to be a new uh, viewer. I haven't seen him on here before. Thanks for all the responses tonight, guys. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. We do try our best and we do want to get you guys more involved in both our shows. So, Jason, um, yeah, you, people can phone in questions and everything for your shows as well, can't they? If your yeah, yeah, we we normally arrange calls beforehand, bring people onto the show. I've got this new, if I can show it here, got this new deck, which is what I use down here. This is my, um, that's my road deck, so I can you know bring in calls and stuff like that, and you know I can play things throughout the show and stuff like that when people are calling in. Sorry, guys, you've got to fix that up. So when people actually call in. You know, I can um, have them on the show, um, you know, which is awesome. Sorry, guys, I'm just trying to get that to work. I shouldn't have done that probably during the show. But, uh, yeah, we can do all that stuff, man. We spoke to gun shops. We've got heaps of shows coming up. Um, we Uh-oh, now it looks like we have lost Jason. <laughs> He's obviously hit. Now his connection's gone. <laughs> Here you go. Sorry, <laughs> guys. just about... <laughs> you know what happened then? I literally was moving Welcome a screen. To the show, I pressed Jason. the wrong button. Just a- yeah, I, pre- I pressed the wrong I button. I went to go to- back. And I pressed back. I was about to bring up a comment on the NBN. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah good, mm-hmm. There you go. Got to love the NBN, guys. <laughs> yeah. Living proof. And we've got a few no, new that was ones. Me then. I, clicked the, I clicked the back button by accident, man. So that was totally my fault. So I quickly just. Um, jumped back in so sorry about that guys but you know that's what live stream is all about guys both the good and the bad when you make mistakes it's not like an edited video where you can got time to edit everything out so oh, and here we go guys this station's gonna love this uh, oh, uh, ten dollars yes thank you explosive bagara aaron make a video with your pistols i'm loving the SIGs and 1911s. Well, that is coming up. We are going to be doing it. I was just talking to a mate today to come and help me be – he shoots pistols, and Jesus, he's got some good pistols, amazing pistols. I'm going to borrow some of his as well. So we will be doing that very, very soon. Uh, it's just a matter of finding the time. I've got to go there during the week. I think I've lined up an awesome club that I used to belong to, which is an outdoor club, and I can go down and use. And here we go. Mick Beck is thank twenty dollars. Thank you so much. Got to finish a night with a super chat. Thank you very much. I feel sort of feel like it's a bidding war going on. This is <laughs> awesome. It's really good, so guys, much, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, I've been enjoying doing this actually, talking about all these topics, and uh, it's just been fun, you know, to get involved and do something. We've found a program that works for us to do live stuff. It's uh, been fantastic, man. So no, we can't no, really find it. Need to work. So? Yeah, or, or don't press the back button while you're doing a live stream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Neil, uh, thanks for your uh, for your answer, boys. Let's all get our art license so we can start hunting ASAP. Uh, love your show and learn so much every week. Owe you a box of beer each. 
Sounds good. Sounds good. I will drink Jason's box because he does not drink beer. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, you get, if you replace that with vodka, and I'll be your best mate. But I yeah. don't drink that much anyway. I just getting too many. If I have a drink these days, I mean, the next day I'm just like written off for days on end. So, yeah, exactly. But, um, you know, yeah, I, f- I feel it as well. Yep. And sugar loaf, everything here for dear. Did you see the news feed on the new feed on how many we have? It's a plague. Yes, it All is. right, guys, I've just figured out we're heading down to Chris Miller's property in Sugarloaf and we're going to smash some deer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thousands of people will be turning up. So, yep, uh, get your missus to start cooking. Yeah, mate, just we'll go a couple more, mate. We'll go three or four minutes and then I think we'll finish off, mate. Um, yeah, yeah, another load of questions just came through. Uh, thank you for tuning in. And yes, you have just caught us at the end, but you can rewatch the entire show. Yeah, sorry for the technical difficulties, but you know yeah. these things happen on live stream, guys. As part of it, and hopefully it won't happen next week. There you go, Jason. There's one for you. Okay, Dirty Fox. Thanks to Apply. I've also got ticket six five fifty five at a timber stock. I load Hornady ninety five grain V Max to shoots under one inch two hundred yards. Great for foxes and dogs. Yeah, mate. Um, you know I like the heavier bullets only for the fact that of good BC. But yeah, I know I know a guy that runs a creed more um, for heavy bullets for more bigger stuff, and then he runs a light, almost varminting six five four, um, which I think he's using the same as you because that's the smallest you can get in the V Max, the ninety five grain V Max. So, yeah, mate, absolutely. I'm sure that would just turn him inside out. Well done. Yep, and uh, Jason, if you could answer this because we don't have uh, our licenses for Queensland, so I got absolutely no idea. We yeah, can't hunt on our license without joining double S double A, mate. Go just ring up your local club, see if they're affiliated as a they're called an AHO, an approved hunting organisation. If they're an AHO, you can get your game license as well. There's plenty of clubs out there that are affiliated AHOs with the DPI. Um, obviously, double S double A being one of them. There's plenty out there, guys, um, that you can join to get your DPI license or our license to go hunting on public land. Um, Demir said there, Jason, hope uh, how about an invite on the next state forest trip? Yeah, mate, you're the first one I'm going to invite on the next trip. But uh, I've got a pool of hunters that I always, as mates, that we all go because sometimes on the last trip was really big. We had like 13 guys, mate, trying to find camp spots all in one area in a state forest, and that's the biggest hunt we'd ever have. And uh, I'll tell you, big group, freaking awesome. Good conversation, good food, good mates, man. I, honestly, probably one of the best trips I've been on. So I take it you can't take a chainsaw down and just clear a bit of a patch? If you, It depends. Normally, we uh, if you go, we'd follow see a down tree, we normally do, but I don't know the legalities of that, but, uh, you know. Start, start it's, hacking into it. nothing worse than being cold, man, when you're in the state forest. And last trip, it was freezing, dude. I even bought one of those diesel heaters you saw me use on um, on my Facebook page, uh, those new diesel heaters you put in campers. I'm going to run one in my tent. So I was just testing one tonight, actually. Yep. Okay, happy hunter. I would put up coin for a super chat, but my missus would rip me a new one. Sorry, boys. <laughs> That's okay. But uh, if you'd like me to talk to your missus and set her straight, I'll have a quiet word to her. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm sure. Remember, you can you always consider the live stream. You can always reconsider the wife. Never forget that. <laughs> yeah. And, um, <laughs> yeah, basically, uh, who brings home the bacon? That's what I want to know. So maybe just stay at home dad. Nothing wrong with that. Yep, exactly, exactly. Yep. Uh, no, we understand. We are. We basically we're just really happy with you guys uh, watching the show and enjoying the stuff. You know, never feel obliged. You have to give us money, but here's our mate Phantom with a ten dollar um, Hunter Valley full of deer. Well, looks awesome. like we're going to Phantom HD's property if he's got one. <laughs> yep. So this is one thing I am dirty about in Queensland. We cannot shoot on public land. We own the bloody stuff. We're taxpayers, and we can't even shoot on it. Uh, that's one thing you guys, Victoria and New South Wales, have over us. You can use public land. Yep. Uh, look at that last <laughs> comment. Uh, Bagara. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Happy Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, we're not making fun of this funny, man. Yeah, no, uh, Happy Hunter's a top bloke, extremely nice bloke. Yeah, Happy so, Hunter's a good fella. He's a good fella. He's a good fella. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, once again, as we said, we always say we are just so appreciative of everything you do to help the show. And most of all, actually just watching the show and watching the video and subscribing to the channel and heading over every couple of weeks and listening to Jason's podcast, which is uh, the best uh, hunting and fishing podcast there is. Uh, I've listened to a few around the world and it always comes back to Jason's seems to be one of the best there is. And definitely the best of Australia, that's for sure. And so, the longer. Uh, yeah, longer. How long have you been going now? Almost 10 years. Oh, sweet, sweet. Anyway, I guess we'll finish off, mate. We'll um, yeah. we'll finish off, and uh, it's been a bloody good night, hasn't it? Um, except for our technical difficulty. Yes. But, um, you guys, let us know in some of the comments just before we finish off in a minute. What do you want to hear from next week? But we've got plenty of stuff, so just subscribe to Aaron's channel. Hit us up on the grams and the Facebooks and all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you've got any questions, be here next week for next show because uh, get in early. We, we've we been putting the link back a little bit later because, you know, a lot of people are just putting way too many questions for too early on and uh, we can't get to it. So awesome show, guys. Thanks. Yep. Jay Rush again starting off the um, – and Paul, is it uh, – Jewe? Like, uh, sorry, I've got it wrong. Um, all the super chats and um, helping Aaron out on the show. Bloody good, guys. You guys are the best, man. Putting your – during COVID, putting your uh, – you know, hard money to, to good use for, for Aaron, and it's uh, really appreciated. Yeah, we really do appreciate it, guys. You guys are awesome. And once again, Jake just said, please hit that subscribe button. I've only got half of what I had from when YouTube uh, took my video, my channel down. I'm really trying to build it back up. New, uh, new reviews coming out tomorrow afternoon, so please watch out for that and enjoy it. It's all about an Australian-made product, a chassis system, exactly what we're talking about tonight. And hit that notification bell and find Jason and me also on Patreon. If you'd like to donate to Patreon, everything helps. Yeah, so once you again. You can't, one thing, if you can't do the, the, the super chat or anything like that, or Patreon, share the video. That's that, that's more than enough. Yes. Jump on your social medias or onto the gun channels and share it, you know what I mean? And hopefully, you know, that's a big difference. That makes a huge difference. You know, sharing it makes a huge difference. If you can't afford to support, that's fine. Just share it with your mates, and if they like it, if they don't, well, fuck them, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep, sharing is a big thing. So whenever you see a video come out from on my channel and Jason's uh, channel, just hit that share button. Um, we normally bring them up in uh, the Facebook, and Jason's podcast on his page is always saying what is up. So share his posts on the um on his podcast and get the word out there about both our shows and once again hit that notification bell the subscribe button and share this video and have a great and safe weekend shooting and we'll see you same time same place next week thank you very much